Welcome to Mobila's real-world test of the Hyundai Ioniq 6, and this is our test driver Denise. Nice to see you. We're about measured, real-world information to paint a truly insightful picture of how well a car does what you need it to do during your driving day. In this case, we'll focus on one big chunk of that day, the commute. Denise, you'd better get ready. I'm on it. We're going to progress through many parts of it that you'll recognize, and here are their overall results. To learn more about any of them, jump the video to their time shown on the tabs below, or watch everything straight through. Okay then, let's get going. How easily can the Ionic 6 accelerate you onto a freeway? Well, this version gets a very good score of 80%, and here's why. Denise, can you please accelerate normally on this standard on-ramp? Can't I go full blast? I need you to pretend to be a normal driver. Dang, but okay. It needs only 32% of its full power to accelerate normally to its 65 miles per hour merging speed by the end of this 1,000 foot on-ramp. In other words, it has 68% in reserve. That's plenty in case the on-ramp is short, uphill, or you have to suddenly scoot ahead because there isn't a matching gap. Here's how its ability to accelerate compares to all the cars we've tested and their average. That's pretty great. Takeaways? 1. It responds very quickly to moving the pedal. 2. If you need it, there's crazy power until about 35 miles per hour. And 3. It fades after that to typical power, but still remains very, very capable. What you're hearing is the Ionic 6's actual interior noise at 65 miles per hour. How loud is it? This gets a good overall score of 66%, and, by the way, the best way to measure it is actually not in DBAs, but in zones. Here's a comparison of all the cars we've tested, their average, and the Hyundai's loudness which clearly beats that. Another aspect of interior noise is how it can muddy conversations or podcasts, this is speech garbling, which we can also measure. While its speech garbling score is almost as good as its overall quietness, it's a smidgen less good, which slightly lowers the final result. Takeaways? This is one of the quieter cars we've tested, but it's a fraction less great at letting you hear conversations or podcasts. Can I turn up the radio now? Related to interior noise is freeway ride quality, here at 70 miles per hour. How well does the Ionic 6 ride? This version gets a good score of 60%, and here's how it stacks up against all the cars we've tested and their average. A car basically shakes us in two ways, up and down bouncing and tiresome head nodding, and these results represent the combination of both of them. Denise, what do you feel in there? Actually, there's less than the usual amount of slow, up and down undulations, and it feels very controlled, but there is a little bit more head nodding than usual. Takeaways? 1. The Ionic 6 gets a good overall score. 2. Its up and down motions feel taut. And 3. There is more than average head nodding, but it isn't a problem. Denise, can we put a child seat with a kid in the back? Where do we get a kid? Can you imagine one? Like this? Okay, this child seat experience would get a score of 66%, and here's how it compares to all the cars we've tested and their average. Overall, a car's ride is similar for everybody in it. But the child seat experience has some special quirks that can make it roughly twice as bad as for the front, adult occupants. Anyone in back is closer to the rear wheels which usually have stiffer springs. And while adults up front are heavy and their seat cushions can be thought of as part of the car's suspension, a kid in a child seat is light, the seat itself doesn't have much cushioning and should be compressed down by its latch belts to be safe. All of this reduces how much the rear seat can absorb bumps. Takeaways? The Ionic 6 has good child seat ride quality, and two, this is owed to its well-controlled up and down motions, which more than compensate for its head nodding tendencies. How well does this lane centering work? It gets a below average score of 32% and here's why. Basically, lane centering helps to automatically steer via a camera in the windshield that sees the lane lines ahead and tries to follow the center line. Here's the range of positions the Ionic 6 actually followed. It does a good job of not wandering around from its chosen path, but unfortunately, that path is noticeably offset to the passenger side. Here's how it compares to all the cars we've measured. Denise, what kind of driver attention system is used here? It requires holding the wheel and occasionally giving it a slight motion so it knows you're paying attention. But I could do a better job if I steered it myself. I know, we've measured you. But its point is to reduce driver stress while commuting, and this car's is probably just out of calibration. Takeaways? 
This is obviously a good system that can plot a precise path, but good calibration is necessary for it to be effective. Denise, can you turn on adaptive cruise control, place it in its closest following setting, and take your feet off the pedals? Got it. The system in the Ionic 6 gets a score of 86%, and here's why. Adaptive cruise control has many behaviors, but the most critical ones are how confidently it stops in heavy traffic. Here, all of its braking behaviors are combined to show the Hyundai's performance compared to all the cars we've tested. Okay, here's the Hyundai's following gap at a steady 40 miles per hour. Now here's how much closer it is at 40 miles per hour during normal slowing, that difference is due to its delayed response to the lead car. This closeness, while you're slowing to 20 miles per hour can make you nervous if it's inconsistent or you're approaching at too high a relative speed. But the Ionic 6 does a great job at all of these. Takeaways? It reacts quicker than most to a car slowing ahead. And critically, it maintains a very consistent gap. Its confidence in doing all these things make it worth using, and trust me not all are. We're almost done with our freeway commute, and the off-ramp is coming up, but here's this car blocking the lane change we need. How quickly can the Ionic 6 accelerate far enough ahead to make it? Well, it gets a score of 70%, and here's why. Denise, can you nail it from 60 to 70 miles per hour to pass that guy? No problem. Holy smoke. The Ionic 6 does this in a quick 1.6 seconds. Here's how that compares to the average and all the cars we've tested. Now let's look more closely at what really happened. Nerd alert. After pedal stamp, it reacts super quickly but then accelerates only a little quicker than average. This shows how important response can be. It's slower than the other EVs we've tested, but it's still in another league compared to these gas engine cars in gray. Takeaways? Its acceleration in this speed range is only slightly better than average, but its very good result relies on its quick reaction after stomping the pedal. Now that we've exited the freeway, here's our final takeaways. From best to last, its adaptive cruise control is very responsive with very consistent slowing in traffic. Next, the Ionic 6 has excellent reserve power while accelerating normally onto a freeway. It's very reassuring. Not surprisingly, its passing ability is very good due to its almost instant EV response to pushing the pedal. Its child seat ride quality is solidly better than average. Interior noise is low, with conversation garbling almost as good, so podcast fans listen up. Front seat ride is good, but definitely taut with a touch of head nodding. The only really subpar result here is its lane centering, which is well-focused, but noticeably out of calibration. So that's a wrap for the Ionic 6's freeway performance. Not bad for a couple of two-dimensional characters, right? I think our elocution needs some work. Should I try David Attenborough's voice? I'd settle for Doug Demuro's.